बियर ऑफकोर्स ये और ठीक होनी चाहिए तो अच्छी लगती है हाई गाइस दिस इज डॉक्टर भावेश गुप्ता हियर हेयर ट्रांसफर सर्जन फ्रॉम क्लिनिक इंटरनेशनल मुंबई ब्रांच टूडे वी आर मेकिंग ए वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो ऑन हाउ टू अचीव ए थिक एंड डेंस बियर्ड ग्रोथ Coming to the beard history, the epic history and the legacy of beard grows goes a long, long way back. In the prehistoric times, scientists believed that men used to grow beard because of three primary reasons. The first reason being achieving some warmth from the cold climate. The second reason being acting as a cushion to prevent some injury to the facial structures during a fight, and third being as a sign of intimidation during the war. Much like a mane of a lion, the beard in a, a well-grown beard in a man signifies or gives a certain infused look and a very strong look uh, because of its appearance, and uh, it gives a manhood look to a man. If you see, all cavemen used to grow beard around 10,000 BC back. In ancient Greece, a well-grown beard was seen as a sign of virility, wisdom, and manhood. The importance of a well-grown beard in Greece was so much so that Spartans used to shave half beard as a sign of punishment in soldiers who used to show some sign of cowardness. The military mustache then became famous around 200 years ago all around the Europe where European soldiers used to keep a thick black mustache to show the sign of a fearlessness. Now coming to the trend of beard growth in India. India as a country has a rich legacy of men with beard. Eminent personalities, sports stars, musicians, poets, politicians, yogis and gurus. There are so many personalities having good beard and it was considered as a sign or as a marker of liberated thought and expression. Trend of beard growth was also observed in the era of maharajas and maharanas. Maharajas like Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Chhatrapati Shambhaji Maharaj and maharanas like Maharana Ranjit Singh used to keep a long thick beard. Poet Mirza Ghalib, Mystic Kabir and great artists like Jatin Das, Satish Gujral and Manjit Bawa all used to keep beard. Even Sri Ravindran Tagore ji used to keep beard and his beard personified thoughtfulness, intellect and wisdom. These all these eminent personalities have great impact on the young's mind and today we see so many young guys inquiring about beard transplant and beard hair growth. If you see in today's scenario half of the Indian cricket team and half of the bollywood stars they are keeping beard on an average we see 3 to 4 inquiries of beard transplant every single day in our center after doing hundreds of beard transplant on young guys we have now finally come up to make a video on how to achieve a thick beard growth if you are not getting it genetically then what are the other options we have to achieve a good beard growth coming to the main topic beard growth is it in our hands basically you have to understand that genetics play the major role in a beard growth of an individual an individual might inherit the hair growth it might be on the scalp it might be on the beard from the parents we can inherit it from the father side or from the mother side what we observe in our clinical practices if the face resembles the father he might inherit the kind of beard growth facial hair growth from the father family or from the father and if the face of the individual resembles a mother he normally inherits the hair growth from his mother family now mother being a lady he might not inherit the hair growth from the mother but he might inherit the hair growth male family members on the mother side like his mama or his nana on an average a human body has 5 million hair follicles all over the body at birth and this is not changed after birth some follicles might remain in dormant stage throughout life and some follicle might turn from villus to terminal hairs that goes to say that some follicles might turn from thin to thick hairs at the time of puberty what we see normally is the beard hairs the arm hairs the pubic hairs all these hairs turn from thin to thick when a individual attains puberty normally what we see is young individual or young guy might start to have his hair growth or beard growth specifically beard growth it starts from 15 to 16 years of age and it takes 5 to 6 years of time for those baby hairs to thicken up and for an individual or for that young guy to attain a full beard growth he might attain at the age of approximately 25 to 26 India as a large country has different states and the hair growth and the beard growth might differ from state to state normally what we observe is individuals from states like Kashmir Punjab Kerala and Rajasthan might have a very good beard growth and individuals from state like uh, Bengal or from north eastern states like Assam Meghalaya Manipur Mizoram might have a sparser beard growth it might not be an uh, norm there will be exceptions but we have a general pattern what we see in the beard growth Now coming to the phases of beard growth beard growth might grow in four phases 
Anagen phase, catagen, telogen, and exogen. Anagen is the longest phase. It is the most important phase where the beard grows. It might range from 3 to 10 years. The second phase is catagen phase. Catagen is the phase where the beard hairs, they rest. They don't fall. They are just resting. That might last for a few months. And then the third phase is telogen phase. That is the phase where the hair gets detached from its follicle and then it has still not fallen but it has it has gone detached. The fourth phase is exogen phase which is the shortest phase in which the hair starts falling. So some amount of fall in the beard hairs is normal and it might regrow once it comes back to anagen phase. This duration of phases might differ from individual to individual and that is why you see different kinds of hair growth in different individual. Some guys will have a sparse beard, some guys will have a very fast beard growth, some may have the beard might attain certain length and then stop and some might have a very long beard growth if they keep it, if they don't trim it. Now we will address some myths in beard growth. The first myth being shaving. What we have heard from young individuals uh, regularly is does shaving or does reverse shaving specifically causes a better beard growth? You have to understand that shaving is just for the dead cells of the hair and they are not doing anything to the hair follicles which are 4 to 5 mm or in specific in the beard 3 mm inside the skin and shaving will not do any stimulation to those follicles or those roots and that is why logically speaking shaving whether it is normal shaving or reverse shaving cannot stimulate any kind of beard growth what might end up happening with reverse shaving is when you reverse shave the friction between the blade and the skin increases and that might even lead to some amount of pigmentation on your skin so better avoid any kind of shaving or reverse shaving very frequently uh, just to achieve a, a faster beard growth. Second is application of onion oil, products like onion oil, almond oil, Moroccan oil, beard oil, beard serum, beard waxes. You have to understand these are the products which are basically used to moisturize the beard, to keep the beard more manageable, to make it appear a little more glossy and shiny. These are all applied on the topical portion of the, on the external hair. They don't do anything to the follicles which are there inside the skin and that is why it is not per se for the beard growth but it is only to manage the beard growth. Then the next uh, is using of gummies. We see a lot of companies providing online products like uh, hair gummies to enhance the hair and beard growth but again there is no evidence to prove that gummies can actually lead to any kind of hair growth. The next is uh, performing shear session. Shear session is an exercise. It is called as uh, uh, when the head is uh, down uh, and the pressure is on the elbow and the body is uh, like it's in the reverse position uh, standing in the reverse position it might it has shown to provide to enhance the circulation of the scalp and thereby enhancing the circulation of the hair follicles but again for the beard growth per se there is lack of evidence that it can actually cause any uh, significant beard growth per se the next is use of steroids again we have heard from our young uh, patients that uh, their uh, gym instructor or their friends have advised them to use steroids to make body and to achieve a very good beard growth again you have to understand regular use of steroids uh, might give you multiple medical issues and that might actually not give you any kind of beard growth there is no evidence to show that any kind of regular use of steroids might give you any kind of beard hair growth or might stimulate your beard hair growth. Now we come to the topic where how to actually grow the beard. There are two means of growing it. The first is a non-medical way and second is a medical way. We will first discuss the non-medical way. Starting from exercise. Regular exercise will definitely make sure that your body is in a very healthy condition and it also stimulates the secretion of hormones from the glands into the blood. When there is secretion of hormones, specifically a hormone like testosterone will definitely promote a better hair growth on the scalp as well as better hair growth on the beard. So maintaining a proper timetable and regularly exercising is definitely very good for hair growth. Second is uh, maintaining good and balanced diet. A balanced diet which contains adequate amount of proteins, adequate amount of minerals and vitamins will definitely make sure that hormonal level of the blood is maintained and it will definitely stimulate a better beard growth and hair growth. The third point is doing pranayam, performing pranayam. Pranayam is nothing but a breathing exercise. Not only pranayam but any kind of uh, exercise which any kind of breathing exercise which enhances the oxygen supply to the blood will definitely have a very good impact on uh, beard and scalp hair growth as well as it might also delay the aging and greying process of the hair and the beard. Now coming to the medical therapies of promoting a better beard growth. The first and the most common and most famous being use of derma roller. Derma roller are now available from different companies. They are available online. Derma roller is nothing but a roller with a, different, with a series of needles on the top of it and which might be of different lengths ranging from 0.5 mm to 3 mm but for beard growth what we normally recommend to stimulate the beard hair follicles a derma roller of 1 mm in a normal skin individual 
and 1.5 mm in a thick skin individual is recommended. Definitely you should visit your dermatologist, trichologist or a hair transfer surgeon to take an advice as to what kind or what size of derma roller to use in your case. Second, it has to be rolled in the beard region once a week for at least 5 to 10 minutes for every week for a consecutive 8 to 9 weeks. You have to also take care that when you are using derma roller, the derma roller should be sanitized after every subsequent use. Sanitization means First, you have to clean it after use and then you have to just clean, first you have to thoroughly wash it with clean water and then you have to sanitize it or clean it with an alcohol swab and then only you have to use it the next time or better use a new, fresh new derma roller the next time. The second option being role of PRP. PRP is nothing but platelet-rich plasma. If this is a medical procedure which has to be done in clinic, offer advice from your surgeon or from your doctor. In PRP, what we normally do is we take at least 10 to 12 ml of blood from your hand vein and then we segregate the platelets out of it in a centrifuge. Those platelets contain growth factors which when injected, those growth factors when injected into the beard area along with derma roller, it will definitely stimulate the follicles to grow in the beard region and that is a very good therapy there is no side effect it has to be done once in every month for a series of five to six settings and only after five to six settings we can evaluate the actual effect of derma roller plus prp in your case the third option being role of minoxidil along with the medical therapies like derma roller and in, uh, prp injections the third therapy what you can use at home a topical therapy is use of minoxidil gel minoxidil are available in different formulations in foam in gel in spray formulation but use of gel on the beard is recommended there is a brand name by Togain which is from Cipla company you can use it and second it has to be applied twice a day in the beard area where you want to achieve a beard growth don't have to apply that aminophilic gel one day prior to and one day post derma roller after having a gap of one day post derma roller you can use minoxidil gel on the beard as well Second thing is, you have to take a precaution while using minoxidil gel that once you apply the gel, immediately wash the hand. Don't apply those fingers on any other areas of the face. Otherwise, you can also get some new hair growth or some unwanted hair growth in the other areas of the face, which is not desirable. The next medical therapy being beard transplant. If derma roller, PRP and minoxidil gel has not worked in your case, then you can definitely think of beard transplant and you have to visit your hair transplant surgeon to see whether this is indicated for your case or not. In beard transplant, what we do is normally, if you have some patches on your beard, we might take some graft from the cervical area and transplant it on the face to make the beard more defined and more sharp. Second is, if you have a lot of patches or if you have a completely sparse beard growth and there is no cervical beard growth, then we might also think of extracting some graft from your scalp area and then implanting on the beard area to achieve a better beard growth. In this video, we will try to show you some cases of beard transplant, what we have done in young individuals and what kind of results we have. of beard transplant. Beard transplant can be done in single or two settings in one or two sessions. It depends on the number of follicles which needs to be implanted. If there are only small patches which needs to be covered, we can finish that case in single session. If there is a full beard transplant which needs to be done, then it will require two sessions on day one and on day two on in the two consecutive days. Now, once we have achieved the beard growth by all these measures, how do we maintain it? So, I'll try to share some tips how to maintain a very good beard growth. The first and the most important point is regular trimming of the beard to make sure it appears sharp and neat. The second point being use of beard oil. My personal favorite nowadays is uh, F. Sebicon from Lens Company. It has a lot of good ingredients like the first being arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is uh, known to enhance the follicular penetration. The second is ketoconazole which has anti-dandruff effects. The third content is vitamin D3. Definitely stimulates the growth of follicle of the beard hairs to grow. The fourth is caffeine and hydrus. Again, it is known to enhance the follicular penetration of the drugs. And there are some herbal ingredients as well like amla extract, bingraj extract and jata mansi extract. These are herbal ingredients which are known to delay the graying of the hairs of the beard. Third point being thinning or uh, taking a good and well-balanced diet which contains enough vitamins, minerals and protein intake. This well balanced diet as we have discussed earlier definitely maintains the hormonal level in the body in a great condition at a great level which will definitely stimulate a beard, a good beard growth. And the fourth point being use of hair supplements. When you come for the medical procedures like derma roller, PRP to our clinic along with the procedures we recommend application of minoxidil gel as we have discussed earlier 
and to take hair supplements like hair fat to promote the beard growth. This is anti-dandruff shampoo. Like scalp, beard can also have dandruff and the same shampoo what you use for scalp which, can, which might contain ketoconazole or luliconazole, zinc pyrethone can be used. The same shampoo can be used for beard as well to make sure that beard is in a clean condition. Again, the use of shampoo and beard is a good habit because once you use wax or beard oil, some ingredients or there will be some stickiness in the beard, some contents of it might get stick to your beard oil and which can be removed only with the help of a shampoo. The last point being you know, beard shaping with laser hair removal. We have seen in some cases or in some individuals, they have a lot of beard growth on the face and on the neck area as well, which makes the beard uh, look a little untidy or they have to go for beard shaping often to, to salons. In such cases, you can opt for a beard shaping wherein we, we ask you to go to your hairdresser and get your beard shape. And the remaining unwanted heads of the beard in the facial area and in the neck area, you can remove it permanently with the help of a laser. The laser what we use in our clinic is Candela a long pulse and diac laser which is used to permanently reduce this unwanted hair growth this is done in five to six settings depending on the hair growth what you have and the skin type what you have and after five to six settings we normally achieve 90 to 95 percent of hair reduction in the unwanted areas where you don't want the beard so this is a great idea to make your beard look little more tidy and new so i hope this clears all your doubt about uh, how to achieve a uh, beard growth non medically at home and how to maintain the beard uh, in case you have any doubt do comment below and i'll try to clear all your doubts once again, Dr. Bhavesh Gupta signing off from Clinic International, here from India to the world.